Greetings, happy hallows, we, to all of my conscious beings out there of light and power. We welcome you today and thank you so much for visiting this podcast of R. Kelly Appeal TV. This is our second episode. Here, we remain current on the conversation regarding where the appeal of award-winning artist Robert Sylvester Kelly's appeal is headed. Is there room to set him free or possibly give him more time? I'm your host, Shine Wisdom, and I welcome you again. I was simply amazed by the new subscribers and those who responded on our first pilot video. I thank our viewer from China for showing your love and sharing your business detail of what you do. Please subscribe so you will get the premiere that will take place right here on this channel every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's jump right into the conversation today. So my research sent me to review three important factors about a possible area of appeal. Number one, what positions do the defense have to win or reconsider charges on R. Kelly's behalf regarding his appeal. Number two, should R. Kelly lose his Grammy Awards? And number three, should recanting a story be held in contempt of court and anything stated thereafter be inadmissible? So I asked these questions to many community members and the statistics were as follows. Number one, what positions do the defense have to win or reconsider charges on R. Kelly's behalf? We have found that the sentencing has been postponed from April 2022 to August 2022. Some feel that Robert Sylvester Kelly, a.k.a. R. Kelly, will be set free before the holiday, meaning from now through December 31st, 2021. So we're taking stories from alleged victims who waited so long to report these crimes against them can cause one to believe that the stories may have changed in some way based on memory for the benefit of the group of individuals that actually spoke against Kelly during his time of judgment. For example, Two people see an accident, the first person can see the event totally different than the second. Based on our emotional states of the event, which causes both individuals to have separate accounts. These situations minimize the event in the mind, stating to recall events exactly as they appear, making the reliability of the facts lessened by 2% each day that time lapses. According to the Bureau of Justice and Statistics, on the other hand, scientists have now identified the likely biological basis for this hormone released during emotional arousal. Quote, primes nerve cells to remember events by increasing their chemical sensitivity at sites where nerve wires to form new memory circuits. So, what does that mean? <laughs> what are your views about allowing the docu-series and personal accounts to be the be-all to the juror's verdict? And how do you feel about the short length of time the jury deliberated on a man's life? Do you feel that is enough time to find guilt on all charges? These are, these are very big topics that can be a foundation for an appeal. Because in court, everyone is due their day. And, um, you know, it's just, it's phenomenal how the whole thing went down for me. So let's discuss the underage tapes found alleged to be R. Kelly um, in a relationship, a sexual um relationship with an underage individual. One individual questioned me and asked 
How many times have you yourself been in a crowded room and seen a person that looks like another person, whether it's a celebrity or a person you may know? Then you find yourself in a mistaken identity situation. Could this be the case? Another conversation stated if R. Kelly videotaped everything, wouldn't other underage videos be popping up like popcorn? Just like all the women who has accused Robert for all the heinous acts that have come out all at one time. Yet no one had the strength to come out when it took place. Not the year after it took place, or the first decade after it took place, or even the second decade after it took place. Only until 30 years later can this be considered grounds for an appeal. For me, I look at R. Kelly's music maturing from the 90s through today. I believe um, he was leaving the old mentality behind and his manhood and growth was moving into a new direction, a direction of independence, um, away from the, um, the recording uh, gurus who controlled a lot of the assets, the third party in music industry. I believe he was leaving that behind. He was stepping in the name of love through the buffet into, you know, um, Trapped in a Closet series, moving into other areas that was going to take place digitally. And I believe that digital world would have made R. Kelly 10 times greater than what he already was before all these allegations came out. So um, these are just my thoughts. The talents and, and the imagination of this gentleman and with his gifts and talents in the world known as chaos. I believe this played a significant role um, and I believe that this can be used as grounds to an appeal because of the fact everyone knew who R. Kelly was. Everyone. Now we're going to go to question number two, and that question stemmed from, should R. Kelly lose his Grammy Awards? About the earned awards, the quote, earned awards. When a person has been approved for the physical works performed, such as a Heisman Trophy, a Grammy Award, granted ability through earned opportunity. How can an earned award be taken from a person who has performed the acts that made him or her successful in the eye of the act itself? This is an intrinsic award. The, the Grammy is nothing more than the physical attribute of what another person feels about the individual. So they can take their feelings and they can put it into a Grammy and give it, as well as take it. So it has to be an intrinsic reward that makes it most valuable. So an example would be, you just received an A in your social studies class, and years later you do something immoral or unethical. Is that grounds to take away that A that you've achieved on that exam in your social studies class? Something to consider. Please leave your comments in the comments box below because I would like to get your point of view on what you feel. How many of you feel that R. Kelly worked in the studio tirelessly based upon the um, product that he promoted during 30 years? All of the videos, all of the music, all of the artists that he actually you know, worked with Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, you know, Jay-Z, all of the people that he's worked with over the years. How many of you feel that R. Kelly worked in the studio tirelessly to the point that he would be up for days to have this moral issue be the essence of removing all of his success from his achievements? I remember him being given those awards for BET by very popular people. Vibe Magazine, Vivo, Morning Shows, etc. Achievements to me reflects what has been involved in the climb. It's that intrinsic, power-pushing, positive success. 
And can anyone take away an achievement award for someone who's climbed Mount Everest? No, absolutely not. Because the reality of it is they climbed Mount Everest. Just the fact. I would like to also state that the moral fabric of a person should be considered when going up the mountain. Is it possible that yes, the moral fabric may, fabric may be tainted from demons of another person's past? It is here that we must incorporate a judgment within the award outside of the individual, giving that power to say, we honor you. And it's, it's a sharing that will be taken if anything happens like A, B, or C. So before you get the award, the nomin nominee should be told that if you do A, B, or C, you will, this, this Grammy will be revoked. During the reign of the title, you must hold a certain moral fabric within a community that is all tainted, that's all about money, that's all about non-perfection, that's about you do what you do until something comes about and then after that, you better be ready to deal with the consequence. See, in a conversation last week, it was stated that if doctors can engage in unethical behavior such as racial discrimination and be disbarred from practice, if lawyers can act on misconduct and be banned from practice, so should celebrities, point considered. What are your views? There are many, many people in this world who have become celebrities due to the people they knew, not the moral fabric and ethics of the individual. So as consequences come in our lives, we must be able to remember what has been done, what has taken place, because in this taking place, that is going to be the determining factor of who, who judges who. And that's really something to consider. Number three, should falsifying information on the stand years later and then recanting letters that were signed, paid off, be considered perjury? And nothing at that point be considered from the perjured individual. Hmm. Should falsifying information on the stand years later and recanting letters that were signed and paid off by be considered perjury. Well, first of all, when I was going through my trial, I do remember my attorney telling me, I'm like, okay, they're gonna get on the stand, they're gonna tell the truth, that's why I need this trial, because these are the people who can say that what they witnessed is what they saw, et cetera, et cetera, and I wanted to make sure. And, and when he told me that, <laughs> Do you think they're going to get on the stand and be total 100% truthful? I know I would. I know I would. I know you would. Because we have moral, ethical standards. But if money is involved, if prestige is involved, if a way to get back is involved, because we take karma and we look at it from a position of a narcissistic tendency. Oh, I'm going to be the one to bring the karma only to... to, to to manipulate and maneuver what it is that I want to get what I want just to say how I got it and then feel worthless after having it is very, very vital here. This is the, this is the point of the moral fabric that needs to be considered when creating celebrities because no one cared when R. Kelly and me mentally gifted men were pumping and grinding on the stage in the 90s with all the young girls because he was younger. And it looked okay. But as R. Kelly began to have to appeal to the masses of his fans, he had to go in the direction that they told him to go in. So he was more or less a puppet on a string until he was able to start to build his character based upon stepping in the name of love 
you know, backyard party. You know, a lot of people could take that negative and say, oh, well, that's a sexual connotation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just looking at the whole gamut of the song itself, the music. I'm not looking at the background to all the other allegations that came about. But, um, so backyard party. Um, in uh, the positive, you know, I believe I can fly. I mean, those things, those areas of life was growing within him because he was seeing what life was giving him. He was making lemon, lemonade out of lemons, but he was doing it at a point where someone else higher, more prestigious were looking or less prestigious was looking at how to take him down because that's what the devil's whole mentality is. How can I take this person down? Because if R. Kelly had got into that digital industry, it would have been so different. And I'm talking online, websiting, putting thing, putting people out there. Because you have more of a a you have more of an opportunity online than you would even with all the fans that have ever bought or sold a ticket to be in a arena full. Of fans, he would have had even more opportunity than that. So, this question: falsifying information on the stand years later, and then recanting letters that it were signed. These women signed letters that they stole money from R. Kelly. Who would have thought to think about doing that twenty years before? anything was ever written unless the individual was caught and he wanted to use it to his advantage if ever something came up. That's just, those are just my points of view. Well, people can forget. People are emotional and some are downright liars. According to conversation I've had some time ago, can this be used as a means for an appeal? Can I share that I was paid to say nothing about my harsh, narcissistic relationships for all the years prior? Then, when there's a bash party, I jump in to whip someone while they're down because I had some deep secret jealousy hidden for many, many years. Yes, everyone has a right to stand up for yourself when being a victim. It baffles me when I see so many people standing up for themselves after being so weak so many uh, decades later. Does it take a village to make one realize they have been manipulated or victimized? My goal here in this video is to make everyone listening to this podcast that immediately when you have been taken advantage of, immediately let someone know. If you just write an email to yourself the day that the event took place and never share it, let it marinate until you need it to make sure that it can be used to support your claim. Be as detailed as you would if you were on the stand. Finding emotional alternatives to help one to become stronger regardless of the circumstances are valuable. Thank you so much for joining in this video podcast. If you have any comments, please share them. If they're more private, please submit them to scales2successllc at gmail.com. Next week, we're going to be discussing the illiteracy and the seriousness of the issues related to R. Kelly growing up. And can these facts be seen for an appeal only on R. Kelly Appeal TV? Thank you for watching, subscribing, and sharing this podcast. Peace and blessings.